Morning, Joe. How are you? Morning, Adam. I'm well. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks. Strange times, obviously, at the moment. So yeah. Um, but yeah, so just just wanted to say to anyone watching this right from the, uh, right from the offset, um, Joe is one of our newer agents. Um, just joined EXP quite recently, and this is part of our series of warts and all video diary style sort of interviews with agents who want to be interviewed um, about their journey with the XP, why they've joined, how they're getting on, what their successes are, what their failures are. And um, we're happy to disclose everything and be very transparent about what it's like to be a self-employed agent because it is a new thing in the UK um, uh, for, for a lot of people to be watching. So Joe, uh, welcome to EXP, firstly. Thank you, um, thanks for having me. No, no worries, we're delighted to have you. So um, tell, I suppose, People are going to want to know why you joined EXP. Well, no, give us your background first. Tell us a bit yeah. about yourself first. Yeah. Okay. So um, I started off as an estate agent in East London. Um, and oh, I, did, I did 12 years in London and West Essex and um, had a great career. And then I moved out to Dubai um, just as the crash happened there, which was interesting times. Um, but out there, you are self-employed. So... The, the model out there is very similar to the American model. There's, there's a lot of different kinds of influences in the state agency in Dubai, but it's very different to here. Um, so yeah, I did four years in Dubai covering the Burj Khalifa, the Palm, um, you know, some beautiful developments. And then I had my family out there and then I've come home. Um, so now obviously I've got children, but I want to go back to um, you know, doing what I do best, which is obviously a state agency, I decided that I didn't want to get a job um, because that wouldn't suit me or my lifestyle. But I wanted to go back into a state agency. So I kind of shopped around. I considered doing recruitment for a while in the state agency. But I just felt like the, the technology's moved on so much. It's, it's such an exciting time to be an estate agent with the technology that we have and the options that people have. Um, so I just kind of felt like my heart wasn't in the recruitment side of it and I wanted to, to get back into doing what, because it to me it doesn't feel like a job. It doesn't feel like work. It's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, so yeah, so obviously I've known Ian from um, a long time. He actually recruited me for my first job in the state agency. So, you know, I was quite sceptical at first about the, the whole um, self-employed model working here, having done it in Dubai. And, you know, in the past, I've worked for some amazing estate agents on the high street, and I just didn't, I, I wasn't convinced at first it was gonna work here. Um, but now, I honestly believe it is the way forward. Um, and it gives the client a, a really good option um, as to who they wanna use as an agent, because obviously it's about them. Um, but for me, it works because I, in Dubai, what I learned was that you are self-sufficient. So you do the valuation, you do the viewings, you agree the sale, and you do the conveyancing. So that client only ever deals with you, um, which is something that I learned worked best for me personally, that I wanted to be the client's only contact. So when we first met, uh, I flew up to uh, meet you, didn't I? Um, yeah. And um, and that was one of the things that stuck out for me was you were super passionate about the fact that that you felt you could deliver that personal end-to-end -end service rather than being rather than the client being pushed from pillar to post. You know, the valuer comes out, values it, then someone goes off and you know does the negotiate, and then the sales progressor comes along, and all all these different elements. And and all right, that's the model we've got at the moment, but. But that was one of the things that I think stood out for you. Just going back to Dubai, one of the questions, one of the really, um, I guess, insightful questions for me, that move from being employed to self-employed in a different country, how did you cope with that? What was the, what was the support you had? What were the mechanisms that you used to cope? How did you overcome the fear? It was huge. And obviously, when I went out there, it was Ramadan and the market was literally crashing. Um, and, and things that you don't think of, like the currency and phone numbers, you know, you're writing down P clients' phone numbers and it's all, it's completely different. But yeah, I mean, I look back now and I think, God, I can't believe I did it, but I did. Um, but I just felt really passionate that Dubai was somewhere that I, I wanted to kind of, I wanted to learn a state agency out there because it is a melting pot of so many different cultures. 
So as hard as it was, and you know, I am predominantly a sales agent, but I had to turn my hand to, to doing lettings because the sales just weren't going through. So for a while I just did, um, I just did lettings, but yeah, it, it was a huge change, absolutely huge. And was there fear there? It must have been fear to, to A, go to a new country and B, to not be employed, I guess. How did you go overcome yeah. that fear? There was, yeah. And, and I think a lot of people thought I was crazy. But because a state agency, for me, you know, I always say it's not my job, it's my passion. Um, and I felt really passionate about it. So I just kept going. And, you know, it's very feast and famine when you are self-employed, especially when you're in a different country and you don't have the support network of friends and family um but yeah i guess i you know it was a crazy time but i learned a lot about myself i learned a lot about the industry on probably quite a global level so it was a good yeah it was a good experience um yeah it was crazy to do it but yeah. you know you never learn yeah exactly four years is a long time to last out in dubai i know people that have not even made four months so uh so yeah. it's very well, good. i lived there for 10 in total but four okay. workers and a state agent okay but it was worth it that's the thing adam is that i did have some really dark days but then i had some amazing days you know i was the first estate agent they ever let into the burj khalifa when it launched and that for me was a huge privilege yeah. um you know, so I've, I had some fantastic experiences, but it's life, isn't it? You have to take the good with the bad. It's not all set plain sailing. Yeah. And so coming back to the UK or getting back into a state agency after having the family. Um, so why EXP, I guess? Did you look at other models? Was it just, was it, was it, obviously, so those who are watching, uh, Joe knows, mentioned Ian earlier, a uh, chap called Ian Dobrin, who's, who's an integral part of EXP. Um, ex recruitment director at Connell's Group, unbelievable um, positions that he's held, etc., etc., etc. So was it just down to Ian Dobrin, or was it? Did you look at other models, or what was your what was your sort of take and why? Yeah, I mean, I've known Ian since I was a trainee estate agent. I worked for Ian. Ian, some worked for me. It was actually him that talked me into going to Dubai, which I'm forgiving right. for. Um, so me and Ian go back a long way and I trust Ian, but I did look at other models, of course, and I did consider setting up completely on my own and I looked into it. But what I like about EXP is um, you are an independent agent and you can create your own business, but you also have a support network. And through these challenging times that we've had over the last three or four weeks, I think what has kept me sane on a professional level is knowing that I've got that support network with my EXP colleagues um, and even just things you know Friday morning when we have our meeting is kind of like the highlight of my week just now um, so you've got the best of both worlds but I also really like the um, the influence that we have with the American agents um, so although obviously their their model is, is not what would um, would work for us um, you know just to have that insight of how they work. I think it'd be, um, you know, I was really, really clear with the American leadership when we first started talking to you that it has to be a British company with UK values and British operations and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the American payment model of how agents are paid is, is so more, much more lucrative than it is in the UK, which we were happy to obviously bring over. That was the whole point of it really. But also I think it'd be daft not to, try and learn from other people around the world you know yeah in my learning i've realized that the uk are the one we're the odd ones out <laughs> we're the ones that that employ everybody and pay people a basic salary and five or ten percent the rest of the world are all self-employed and earning you know the the lion's share of the fee um so we're actually we're actually the strange ones in many ways um but yeah we'd be I, I agree with you i think that the network of existing agents um and and the that american sort of training that we can get and just listening to another opinion listening to another, another set of voices is has been invaluable it gives the client a choice doesn't it the, you know the client can use a, an agent that will sell their house for 50p in a miles bar or they can sell their house with someone that will give them amazing service make it actually you know not stressful but get them the best possible price but i think like to a certain degree i was really arrogant when i went to dubai about being a british estate agent and you know we we're a really established market and da, 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 da. um but yeah i think that we can learn a lot from other countries yeah yeah i agree no, because in other countries it's 
you know, it is considered to be much more of a professional job. It's a lot higher calibre. You have to have a qualification in it. So there is a lot to be learned from that. I'm not suggesting that we adopt their procedures and their policies. No, because, you know, we, we have a, a great system here. Um, but it, just in terms of like the marketing and the service and the productivity of each individual agent, you know, I've joined a lot of um, Facebook groups in America just to see how they do it. Yeah. See what well, they're doing. It, yeah, I, I agree. Um, I've, I've always, you know, my, my whole... I mean, you've talked to Olivia who works at EXP and worked for me at Hatched and she'll know, my, and Tori as well, and they'll, they'll both know my mantra, which has always been, I want, I want the public, the great British public, to see agents as their agent. You know, my, my yeah. accountant is Lisa. I don't care where Lisa works. I don't care who she works for. I'm going to go and follow Lisa wherever she goes because she's my accountant. And I want people to see me as their estate agent. I want to see people to see you as their estate agent. I want people to go... Oh, I'm going to speak to my estate agent. I'm going to speak to Joe Hood. She's my estate agent. And that I, I always felt I could achieve that with Hatched, and I didn't because it, the model wasn't set up correctly. With self-employed agency, what I've learned over the last six, six to 12 months now from the US as much as from doing this over here in the UK is that you can, you can now create that with, with a self-employed model. You can belong to people as their estate agent and therefore give them a much higher service um, and earn a better fee out of it, you know, because people are happy to pay it if they're going to get a much better service, much more personal service. So, so yeah, no, it's great to have. And that's why I think it's so important that they just deal with one person because yeah. to, to have, you know, to build up a rapport with somebody and they take your house on and then you get shoved to somebody else who perhaps you don't like and you don't trust and then somebody else and somebody else just doesn't work. If you get to know your client and you know why they're moving, what are they looking for? What is their time scale? Then you can kind of help them and guide them through the process and make it a lot less stressful for them, which ultimately has to be the goal is that it's not as stressful for them and they achieve what they need to achieve, whether that's that you've sold the house for the best price or you've done it in their time scale or whatever it is, only you as one person they deal with can, really kind of execute that properly yeah no, i agree so i Good. couldn't i couldn't go back to being a high street agent because that privilege would be taken away from me and i wouldn't feel that i'd be giving the client best possible service yeah and that and that's exactly why i mentioned earlier when i came up to see you i could see how passionate you are about the customer and that's really important which is great um so one uh, sort of to, coming towards the end of just our chat um how, what's your strategy for winning customers in the first, what, what, what's your go-to strategy? You know, you, you have to lead generate yourself. That's why, you know, if there's a downside to any of these self-employed models, you've got to, you've got to self-generate, you've got to lead generate yourself. What's going to be your strategy, Joe? You've been there, done it in yeah. Dubai. Yeah, so I think that's the beauty of it, is that you have got to do it yourself. So I know what my target market is. My target market is seasoned investors. And I think that after all of this, that things like Airbnb are going to become, um, a lot more profitable because people aren't going to want a holiday abroad and um your sort of mum dad and two kids your own occupiers so through portals such as um, my chosen portals for my target market is facebook and linkedin so they're the two platforms that i will use whereas another agent perhaps you know you might be doing rentals in a trendy part of town and maybe tiktok and, and twitter would be um you know your social media i also think that um, sponsorship is a really important part of what we do. So sponsoring schools and local events and getting your name out there that way, if that is your target market. But I think you have to really narrow down, you know, who is it that you're going to um, choose to be your client and go after them, find out where do they hang out, what social mediums are they on? And, you know, basically that's how, that's how I see um, my business going forward. Um, and then you get to the stage where you're picking up business because of recommendations yeah. and that ultimately is the end goal but yeah. to start with you know it's so easy for us now it's so easy you know back in the day we didn't have technology but every single client that I want to deal with is either on my LinkedIn or my fa or Facebook yeah yeah no, that's interesting. That's fascinating. It's, everyone's got a different answer, but getting to know your client is probably, or the client that you want to deal with is um, absolutely key. And that's a, that's a brilliant piece of advice for anyone watching. So, um, and just, so we're in the middle of coronavirus. It is, what's it, the 14th of April today. Um, we don't know how long this is going to go on for. 
what are your so let, let's pretend we're out on the first of may let's just pretend have you set yourself targets uh, to to achieve a certain amount of instruction sales in month one month two month three and what does that look like yeah i think i think once we come out i mean i've warned my friends and family that they're not probably not going to see me for the rest of the year because it's going to be really busy yeah um so yeah i think it's it's very difficult to predict but i think when we come out i think the first couple of weeks stroke month it's going to be people just getting back to normal ladies getting their hair done you know getting things done like whatever i think after the first month i think we're going to see a real um a real influx of instructions coming on the market and a lot of people moving for a lot of different reasons you know it's like obviously over christmas you know january is a really busy time for um lots of different industries because of things that happen over christmas and that is going to be multiplied massively so i think yeah the second the third and the fourth quarter of this year is going to be super busy. I can't even predict it at the moment, Adam. I just think it's going to go crazy. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. I'm, my, my sentiments as well. Well, so look, I mean, that's a sort of brilliant introduction. We're going to do this every month um, with Joe's blessing, obviously. Um, we're going to sort of follow Joe's story in terms of what she's doing, how she's doing things, how many instructors, how many sales. Um, you know, we'll go into potentially banking revenue uh, if Joe's happy to do that as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I know. Well, this is this is part of the reason. So I do these calls with whoever wants them done as an accountability type thing. I, some people want to be held, you know, to account as it were, and want to have that sort of uh, that 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 sounding board to bounce off of, and others don't. Um, some people want it to be this recording to be put out there live because it puts even more pressure on them. And you're one of those, uh, which is good um but yeah so that's so yeah no no pressure like you say but if you are you know self-employed agency isn't for everybody but i think if you have the right mentality and the right approach yeah. um and have got the right background like joe has then you know and, and we're only allowing experienced agents to join exp by the way then it's probably something you should look into and joe's spoken passionate about it and that's why we love having her on board so if you're interested in self-employed agency then my suggestion is you speak to Joe. Don't speak to me. Um, Joe's on the front line. She knows what it's all about, why she joined, what you have to do, um, and uh, and she'd be a great person to speak to. So, um, all I've got left to say, Joe, is thank you very much for your time. Um, stay thank safe. Thank you. I'm happy to answer anybody's questions if they're thinking about becoming a self-employed agent. You know, I'm I'm happy to talk to people as to why I've done it and why I think it it works. As you say, it's not for everybody. Uh, but for some people, it's life changing in yeah. a positive way. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. All right, Joe, thank you very much for your time. All right. and Have a good day. All right, you too. Stay safe. See All right, speak to you later. Bye. Bye.